Okay, episode three. Uh, we just planted our first city. Um, we've taken one turn, and we were going through looking at where to find out information about food, about amenities, and about housing. Um, how much time you spend in this screen is completely up to you. I could probably go entire games without ever looking at the screen. I might look here, or I might never click this button at all. It's up to you how much detail you need to play the game. The other things I do want to point out here about your city, um, in terms of expanding your borders, you can purchase a tile. So if we had 50 coin and we really wanted to get this piece here because it's got the diamond on it, we could just buy it straight out if we had the money. Um, also, because it's our first turn, we can't quite see it yet, um, but probably next turn, and I can look for that. It would also show us which um, of these hexes we're likely to get, um, would be the next one we'll get, just naturally based on how much culture we have. Uh, managing citizens. This is important to know as well. So we have our one citizen over here kind of working this tile, which means we're getting these resources. We're not getting any of these resources because nobody is working the tile. So even though these tiles are in our border, we're not getting the one food, one gold. We're not getting the one food, two production. We're getting one food, two production from this tile because we have one person and that's what they're working. If we wanted to say, you know what, I don't care about food production, I want as many citizens as possible, I can switch that. And so now we're getting plus four food. If I put it back, Oops. Now we're at plus, plus three food because we had one more food. If we go over here, our production changes from plus 5.3 to plus 3.1. And what that'll do is change how many turns it takes to build a building. So the more citizens you get, the more uh, uh, of these cells that you can fill. That means when we go to decide what we want to build, we could build a builder. And a builder can improve these if the technology is learned. So a builder could build a farm here and make this be, rather than a two food, perhaps a three food or a four food, depending on what type of, of options we have. But if we have nobody to work it, then we're just paying money to improve it because we have a maintenance fee um, and not getting the food benefit from it. So you really only want to use builders when you have um, hexes that are being worked. And right now we can't build a lumber camp. We're not going to be able to build a lumber camp for a while. If we open this up, we can see um, how far into the future we have to go. All the way to machinery. We can't build a lumber mill and improve uh, a hex with trees on it until we're in the medieval area with machinery. So if we had a lot of trees around and we wanted to get that lumber mill as fast as possible, we'd want to focus on these paths first and maybe ignore the sea stuff. So that's where you can make some of those decisions about, about where you're going. So um, the other things here... Um, in addition to uh, using production to make a, something like this, you can just, if you have the money, you can buy it outright. Um, when we build a religion, you can accumulate faith, and sometimes you can buy things straight out with faith. Um, and then if you just want to kind of change where things are, you know, what, what are we producing here? So that's kind of how you navigate a city. There's a lot of information there, um, of course. To, to kind of muddle through most of the time, most turns, you're not really paying too much attention to all of that nitty gritty unless you're the type of person who wants to pay attention to all of that kind of nitty gritty. Um, but in terms of gameplay, we have built our city, we have exp uh, explored a little bit more, and we want to know what's the first thing we're gonna build. And our options are a couple um, more military units, a scout, a builder. I've already argued why against a builder right out. And you can only build a settler if you have a surplus of civilians because it'll eat one, well, it'll use up. It'll take one of these civilians and say, okay, you're gonna go over here. So we can't have a settler until we have at least two. And then this will drop back down to one. 
or we could build this monument, which will give us that plus two culture. I'm going to start with a scout. Um, because one of the things that you'll find as you travel around are tribal huts, which give you bonuses. And the scouts are the best ones to be able to run around and do that, so you can keep your warriors uh, close to home in case any barbarians come. And because we built our city, we can now pick our first technology. And I do want mining because we're kind of on this mercury here and we've got diamonds here which is going to require mining and so i'm going to want that first so i'm going to go ahead and pick that and now we'll take our next turn and we're at our next turn so i'm going to continue having this warrior just kind of take a lap around the map we got more diamonds here and some more water so what we want to be thinking about at this point in the game isn't how do we want to win how are we going to build? What we want to decide now is where are we going to build our next city? Because ultimately, you want to plan to have a foundation of three or four cities. Uh, some civilizations, some players will try to have way more cities than that. Um, but in order to really have a good foundation, you want to have that minimum of three or four. I've done it on three. It can make it a little bit harder for yourself. Four is usually kind of the ideal um to do that but then if you want to expand even further you know um have the entire place just be in your colors you could have 20 sieves if you want but in order to start maximizing your production and being able to do as much in your and really establish your whole civilization not just a city your first thing really should be to scout out where you want to build that next city and nothing's really changed here i haven't gotten a new uh, citizen that's going to take 13 more turns um now that we ha have this culture we can see that it's the it's automatically kind of going to gear itself to get um the more valuable of the tiles next so these desert ones will probably be like some of the last ones that it automatically grows towards so we know that in seven turns we're going to get this diamond and actually, I can check on resources. Yes, uh, that mercury is counting, um, even though it says we need mining. Um, but putting our palace on it did give it to us. So what that means is in terms of that amenity, um, one luxury resource can provide amenities to four cities. Um, and so if I have four cities that only need one, that'll do it. Um, if all of a sudden I get to five or six cities, uh, I'm going to need additional luxury resources to make sure that they are happy as well. That's another reason why four is kind of a good foundation, because um, then you don't have to worry too, too much about uh, amenities um, in that case. So we'll go ahead and do our next turn. All right, I'm going to keep exploring here. We've got some wheat. We've got, again, these amenities here. This is looking like a pretty good place for another city. What I like to keep in mind is, again, we're going to go out one, two, three um, from this city. And your next city is also going to go out three. Some people might put them real on, right on top of each other. For me, I like to play to maximize my land. Then I might go one, two, have an overlap, one, two. So I might, you know, want to put my next city in this sort of distance away. Uh, but that's not always possible. Um, but it's not going to let you put it. So if I bring on this new settler screen, you can see I can't build a new city in that particular radius around my current city. Um, I could build it here on this water until this expands, and then that kind of rules out certain places. So nobody's going to come and build right here. They're not allowed to. The closest could be here, but then we can start expanding and overlapping in those areas. So now we keep going. We just keep hitting next turn until something interesting happens. we got some horses here. I'm not quite sure why I'm seeing... Oh, maybe that's a Spanish thing, because usually you have to... Um, well, maybe not. Oh, like, reveal horses. Um, before you can see them on the map. 
like with iron. I'm not going to be able to see any iron on my map until I research iron. I could have iron all around here. I could have no iron. I don't know. It's luck of the draw. And it's perfectly fair if you get to the point where you've researched iron and realize there is none in a 50 mile radius from my city. Screw this. I'm starting uh, an entirely new map. By all means. Two more turns and we get our scout. And, th okay, so this over here is looking real nice for a new place. We've got, um, this is on a hill, which gives us production. We've got the fresh water. We've got, now we've got somebody over here. I can see the edges of a border. So we've got some rice. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of take a mental note that I think this would be a great place to build a city. And in fact, to have that be a mental note, I can go take a tack and place it here and click the city center. And now there's a little icon here to remember me. I wanted to place a city center there. Okay, and actually, I while my uh, scout goes around, I'm going to go up and see. I think this is going to be a city-state. Yep. So, uh... I will take the next three minutes in this little tutorial to talk about the city-state, um, and then that will be the end of this particular episode. So we've met Zanzibar, uh, and he, so we can just click on Zanzibar's name to get right to his screen. Um, you know it's a city-state because over here it'll tell you you've met a city-state, um, and also because their borders are slightly different, their, their jagged lines are different. Um, and they're going to be black with this particular type of color. And also, when you meet a civilization, you'll get the screen like this, where you get to see the person's face. You don't get any of that with city-states. So Zanzibar, uh, the type is trade, which means it'll give you bonuses of gold. Um, currently, it doesn't have a suzerain. We have sent one envoy to it just automatically because we just met it and we're the first people who met it. Um, so it's influenced by us. And so because we have one envoy there, we automatically get plus four gold in the capital. So now we're getting, um, or, or next turn, well, that'll probably bump up if we're just getting plus 5.2. Oh no, it's in the capital. So it'll already be there. Um, five gold per turn. If we earn more envoys and give them up to three, then it'll be plus four gold in every commercial hub. If we have four cities, a commercial hub in four cities, that's 16 additional gold per turn. And then um, if we get up to six envoys there, we get yet another four gold in every commercial, um, so a total of eight in every commercial hub. That's a lot of bonus gold per turn. And then down here, you can see what happens if you are the suzerain meaning you have the most you have to have at least three to be a suzerain um and then more than anybody else so for zanzibar they have a unique thing where you get to receive cinnamon and cloves luxury so if we're running short on amenities being friends with them will help give you more amenities um then this is the only way you can get cinnamon and cloves and then there's just regular bonuses that happen when you're a suzerain. In fact, like you can go and join wars, they will fight for you, you can levy their military, in other words, you can pay them some money and use um, their military units in addition to your own. <coughs> and so that's up here now, instead of just the world rankings and the list of reports, we have our city-state button, and we can click here and get a short overview of our city-states. So we have one envoy in Zanzibar. We're earning plus four gold in our capital. It doesn't have a suzerain. We can click on it to find it. And it's also right now giving us a quest. If we complete a quest, we get an envoy in that city. And they want us to trigger the inspiration for mysticism. So if we go here into our civics tree, mysticism, the trigger the inspiration is found a pantheon. So if we found a pantheon, we get an extra envoy in in zanzibar so that's a brief uh quick loaded overview of of city states since we've met our first city states 
Um, and I'm going to take my uh, scout here and just bring him down here so we can see what's over here. And because apparently we discovered a new continent, we boosted our foreign trade. And I think that's going to run me out of time, so I'm going to stop there. Um, I'll come back, I'll do one more shirt episode in this little time, uh, and then um, kind of do our next couple turns and, and see where that takes us and what other opening game information I can, I can provide.